<clears throat> Good day, world. It's February 7th, 2.13 a.m., 2021. My name's Michael, and just my thoughts for the day. It was a strange day. There was individuals that came into my life that were hostile and they're mirroring some aspect of hostility within me. So with compassion, I observed and questioned my own hostility, where it would come up. So you will come to know that everyone is literally mirroring you, some aspect of you. And to judge that, to judge them would be to judge yourself. Hence the saying, judge not lest ye be judged, right? So, I don't know where to look. Do I look at the little camera up top, I guess, where the flashing light is, perhaps? Because I'm looking at myself here, so I probably appear to be staring downward at something. Anyways, uh... You brilliant lights, you wonderful soul-traveling companions. We're here to raise the collective, the frequency, the emotional quotient, eh? the IQ, the intelligence, eh? the, the 647 muscles in the body that are made up of 75 trillion cells approximately, each able to house 1.17 volts. Of current a brilliant yet 10% of the brain is used 90% of the DNA is junk don't believe it especially now what you believe what you feel to be true for you is the focus and your intention whether you're choosing it intentionally or not, will manifest. As John Lennon wrote, instant karma going to get you, good or bad. So focus on what you would like to see for everyone, yourself and everyone. Simplify. Maybe uh, myself, I focus on Everyone experiencing the peace of God that passeth all understanding. What more is there after that? To reside in the peace of God that passeth all understanding. See, we are in a world, a polarized world. In the Bible, it's described as the knowledge, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, up, down, hot, cold, wet, dry, man, woman. You're crying or you're laughing. You're happy, you're sad. You're breathing or you're not. Hey, you're paying attention or you're not. You're speaking or you're listening. So it's always a polarity happening here. So... It's a, it's, it's a life that is basically friction all the way through. There's some friction. There's always oxidation happening. Oxidation, oxidization. Okay? The fluffing off of electrons, right? You know how you vacuum seal your food? You pull all the air out of it. Why? So it'll stay fresher longer. Because if you just put it in a container and there's air in it, you see how it goes, tends to go rancid or stale quickly. So what do we do? We pull the air out of it and then we freeze it as well. Right? Slow down that process of breaking down. Right? Cryogenics it's called, right? Cryogenic chambers, they freeze you. And, uh, hey, you know, as Captain America was frozen in the ice for whatever, however many.
many decades. So once again, I will repeat, I will repeat, and I will repeat over and over again. Because repetition is the master teacher. Okay? As they say, 10,000 hours at anything that you focus on, you become a professional at that. It doesn't matter what it is. Shooting up a heroin needle or literally winning a Nobel Peace Prize because you have such brilliant ideas that change the world and the course that we're on for the better. Many have come forth with their ideas to better our experience here. Stanley Meyer in 1996, I believe, or 94, with his water engine, okay, he built an engine and put it in his dune buggy that ran on water. And if you know the process of electrolysis, where you run a current through water, what happens is you break the bond between the hydrogen and oxygen molecule, H2O, right? And because the hydrogen molecule is lighter than oxygen, it immediately floats to the surface. And with a tube, you capture that hydrogen and it goes directly into the intake of that engine. Into the pistons, you're combusting now with hydrogen. And what do you have coming out the muffler? Water vapor. So Stanley Meyer, you can look him up. Stanley Meyer was visited by the Pentagon and NASA. And they said to him, basically, we want to buy the patent off you because we want to use this uh, technology in our jet propulsion labs for space technology. And he said, no, you don't. You want to shelve the technology and keep it from humanity. But I'm ready to manufacture Two weeks later, he dropped dead in a restaurant as he was walking up with his family from food poisoning. Dropped dead. Two weeks later. I can't remember this doctor's name, but in 1994 or 3, I believe, he came out and uh, at the World Press Conference and said, Ladies and gentlemen, I am one of six doctors studying the AIDS virus right now at the Center for Disease Control. And it's been three and a half years. I'm still not convinced. So what I did about a month ago is I injected myself with the virus in front of my colleagues. What do I have now? Bupkis. That's exactly what he did. Bupkis. I haven't heard that since the 70s. Bupkis. Meaning nothing. After injecting himself. And he went on to say, Ladies and gentlemen, there is no virus that will kill man. The only thing that will kill man. And what did he do? He held up a syringe. Said the only thing that will cure, that will kill man, is the cure that they have to offer you. So do your research and find out what is in the vaccine for this uh, Schlitz, Bush, uh, Anheuser, Heineken, um, Old Vienna, Schlitz malt liquor, Corona. COVID-19. Find out what's in it. You will be shocked. Nanobots, biosensor gels, the quantum dot, little chip that holds all your info. It's true. Look it up. Again, I will not subject myself to ridicule by putting out false information. So... And then again, I'm just repeating what the information that has been put out there has been stating. Look up Dr. Carrie Madej, C-A-R-R-I-E, 
M like Michael, A D E J. She breaks it down. The real deal. She's a friend of a friend's. And you will be amazed. So, this is the point where the long count of the Mayan calendar uh, really comes to the forefront. Because what happens as we leave one constellation and enter the next, we, it takes about 2260 years to cross a constellation. Well, down here, we call them hor the horoscope. I'm, I'm, a Vir I'm a Taurus. I'm a Libra. I'm a Gemini. What's your horoscope say? Oh, I'm supposed to meet someone today that's going to provide an opportunity for me. Whatever. Entertainment, right? Right? This is not Shastri readings. More uh, Eastern astrology that is serious. For thousands of years, the stars were studied. And what was transpiring here was recorded. So when we would come back around to that same star system, it was recorded down what was to be expected. So think of Atlantis, right? The fall of Atlantis, the exodus of the Egyptian slaves, Noah's Ark, Spanish flu, Irish potato famine, Inquisition, so on and so forth. These are small cycles ending and long, bigger cycles ending. So we are at the end of the 26,000 year cycle, which basically it's, all that means is that we've gone through all 12 zodiac signs or 12 constellations. We just emerged from the Piscean constellation and entered into the Aquarian constellation. Now that energy from that uh, star system has been building up for several years now. And it's been exposing a lot of uh, hidden uh, goings on that the average individual was not privy to like the transgender uh um the transgenders in hollywood if you think back of the shakespearean actors there was no women allowed to act they were all little boys playing the parts of women they held the roles of women no women were allowed on stage shakespeare wouldn't have it to this day the greatest actresses are transgender, ladies and gentlemen. Don't take my word for it. Look into it. The ones that win all the Oscars over and over and over again, those are transgenders. The ones that win the Grammys over and over and over, those are transgenders. I know, your mind's racing right now. Which ones? I'm not going to even get into it. But do your research. You'll see the anatomy of a man and a woman completely different. A man's shoulders are proportionate to his hips, wider usually than his hips. A woman's shoulders are narrower than her hips, or one-to-one -one ratio, not wider. A man's fingers, if you see my ring finger, is longer than my index finger. A woman's index and ring finger will be approximately the same size. 95% of women. Okay, you have the odd woman that has this male feature. Right? A man's hip bones are below his belly button. A woman's hip bones are above her belly button. Her belly button. Childbearing hips, as they're called. Or to make room for the womb and that child to develop. The hips are above. A man's back bends just at the crease of where his ass begins. Gluteus maximus, there you go. But 
A woman's back bends in the center approximately. Why? To carry a child, right? So these are the differences in our physiognomy. So check out, you know, even presidential wives. If you YouTube Joan Rivers commenting on Michael Obama, Michelle. I go by, isn't that funny? I go by Michael, and yet my name, my first name is spelled M-I-C-H-E-L-E, which you would pronounce Michelle, but it's an Italian name, Michele. Actually, it's Michelangelo. It's another story. So, Joan Rivers, she's walking into her apartment in New York, and she's uh, confronted by one of the paparazzi or interviewers there, uh, live on camera, and he says, Joan, you host the fashion police. What do you think of Michelle Obama's fashion? And Obama had already been in office for a few years. And she turns around and says, oh, you, you mean Michael? And he says, excuse me, what? Oh, Michelle Obama's a man. Everyone in Hollywood knows that. And he goes, excuse me. And she just keeps walking into her apartment. Two weeks later, she went in for minor surgery on her vocal cords. Dead. Coincidence? I think not. Do your research. Do your research. Why would I make this stuff up? For what reason? What do I have to gain? Ridicule? Look into it. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Mandela Effect. But it, it, it's called the Mandela Effect because it was said that Mandela died in prison in the 80s. And then all of a sudden, you get in 2013, Mandela dies. A lot of people remember him dying in prison, and a lot of people don't. They just remember him dying with all the dignitaries and former presidents of the world, prime ministers, being at the funeral in 2013. So many things have changed as the Bible, scriptures have changed. There's a scripture that says, For thou shalt not put new wine into old skins, for the old skins shall burst, and you shall lose the wine and the skin. Meaning, if you put, you're making wine, you put it into an old skin that's flimsy. That wine is going to ferment and create gas. That skin will expand and, boom, explode. You don't have any wine any longer. You put it into a brand new skin that's very elastic-like. Still has a lot of collagen in it from stretching, right? So the gas builds up and it'll ferment into nice wine. Now, that scripture has changed. For thou shalt not put... New wine into bottles. What does that mean? What? Where's the moral there? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I never remember saying that prayer like that. I remember saying, on earth as it is in heaven. Thou will be done on earth. As it is in, not in earth. Right? Look these things up. Your Bible has changed. The Berenstein Bears are no longer the Berenstein Bears. They're the Berenstain Bears. Forrest Gump no longer says, Mama always said life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Now he says, Mama always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. What do you mean life was like a box of chocolates? That doesn't make any sense. Mama always said life is like a box. That was the line. It's no longer the line. Look it up. The line from Star Wars, Luke, I am your father. No longer is that line. It's Now the line is... No, I am your father. It's no longer Luke, I am your father. But yet you see remnants of that old timeline. If you watch uh, 
Oh, what's that movie with, uh, what's his name? Good God. Chris Farley. Little fat man or little fat boy or something with, uh, with his, uh, friend there from the Grown Ups, too. He was on, uh, Saturday, SNL, Saturday Night Live. They did the movie together. And he's, uh, he's, uh, you know, he's, uh, in a fan. As the fan is, is plugged in. You might have did that when you were a kid, go, ah, and your voice vibrates because the fan blades separate the sound. And so he would say, Luke, I am your father. So that's a remnant of that timeline because no longer are we in that same timeline because that's changed. Forrest Gump has changed. Bernstein Bears, the Bible's changed. The Statue of Liberty is no longer where it used to be. And there's many, many geographical changes as well. There's so many. There, There's so many. Like, why get into them? Just, again, if you really want to know, you'll do your research and you'll, you'll be shocked. You know, Australia, New Zealand uh, has changed. Uh, land masses where they were are no longer there. And are... Anyways, folks, you could look into that if you like. But it'll just lead you to another rabbit hole. But it's entertainment. If you want to be entertained for a while, while you sit around at home and wonder what's uh, the government, govern, rule, to rule, meant, mind, what the mind rulers have planned next for you. I doubt that it's anything good. Again, we are at the end of the 26,000-year cycle. We enter the Aquarian constellation, which is pouring in a new kind of frequency. This frequency is meant to restore the RNA-DNA information transfer. Uh, the RNA-DNA transfer information uh, directly uh, by light codon. Uh, the amino acids or the codons, uh, they're like little antenna, right? And there's 64 of them. They pick up the information. 20 of them are active. 44 are dormant. Now, I lived in South Windsor. You can say, four, well, you can say, I lived in South Windsor, 44 Neal Street. I opened up a business with a friend of mine um, on 44 University Street. My address now is 44 Simcoe in Amherstburg. So you'd think that once twice, three times. That's my soul speaking to me, saying this is the mission, my friend. Activate the 44. Okay? Activate the 44. Well, I mean, that was the, the statement mission 32 years ago, June 25th, 19... 89 when I experienced this out of body uh, understanding uh, Jesus the crystal sea of eternity so much information that I could possibly never speak it forth in one lifetime so there is no need to be focused on activating any kind of DNA codons any longer. Stay away from the jab that they offer you. Stay away from that. That is loaded with biosensor gels, nanobots, and what's known as the quantum dot. That's an identification information chip that literally uh, tells them how your spending habits, how much you have in the bank, uh, what you have invested, uh, and then that also measures your uh, uh, your vitals, uh, blood pressure, oxygen uh, levels, uh, temperature, body temperature. Right? They can tell how many times you've had sex in the day. You get out of hand, say the police is uh, arresting you, you get out of hand, Everyone has a health app, Microsoft health app, and their Android. Again, this is Dr. Kerry Madej speaking of the man who invented it bragging 
how the health app uh, actually could be used in several ways. Uh, say the police were arresting someone, they were getting out of hand, and they had to, uh, you know, say, pile up and hold them down. They don't have to do that anymore. They press a button on this health app, and the frequency now activates the biosensor gels, which the nanobots go into, uh, you know, full throttle and release the enzymatic properties from your brain that cause sedation. You're asleep, basically. Good night. Oh, you're going to give us a hard time? Hold on a sec. One sec. One sec. Click. Boom. You're down. You're down for the count. You are downtown, clown. You get it? Don't fall for this. It's baloney. My friend, Dr. Mark Trozzi, works uh, in the COVID division in Ottawa. He calls it the plandemic. Over 300,000 doctors are suing the World Health Organization for mandating all hospitals to relate all this as COVID-19 related. Less and less people are dying from diabetes, heart attacks, Alzheimer's, cancer, and so on and so forth. They're all dying from COVID now. I've been tested uh, seven times because I was in and out of the hospital in 2019, more times than I care to say. So, seven times tested, seven times negative. And I'll tell you why. Not because I'm so healthy. It's because I don't believe in it. It's not true what others tell you to be true. You're creating your world. The Buddha also said, don't believe it because it's rumored to be true. It's written down in your history books. Or your authority, your teachers say this is truth. But... First, upon investigation, meditation, contemplation, when you see that it's good, not only for you, but for everyone, then consider the truth. Other than that, it's just another temporal ideology. It does not work for everyone, only for some. So it's got to work for everyone. It's got to be beneficial to all. That's why it's called the atonement. But you take that word at one meant. At one meant mind. We are to enter the state of one mind. The mind of God, not the worldly mind. The worldly mind is tied to polarity. It's transitory. All thoughts that the worldly mind spews out on the screen of your mind's eye are transitory. They're coming and going. Your body is ever-changing. Your experiences are ever-changing. Your thoughts are ever, ever flowing like a river. Some of us have so many thoughts in our mind that we can't even pay attention to anything for more than two minutes. Tops. Most people cannot. If I speak to someone like this, and they're not paying for it, two minutes, maybe. And out of that two minutes, maybe... 25% of the information they absorbed. Because the rest of it just went in one ear and out the other. Their minds are so, so quick. So filled with worldly thoughts. Distractions, constant distractions. So the only way that you will regain balance in this realm of polarity is through meditation. 
If you can't meditate, do something that will keep your focus as steady as possible. Write, paint, run, swim, dance. Go and be kind to as many people as you can. Go and do kind acts anonymously. Focus on that. Focus on the one that is paying attention to you doing these acts of kindness. Because your experiences and your thoughts are transitory. Well, so is your body. What that means is it's coming and going. It's not a permanent thing. When you were one, your body was a certain size and shape, but the I that was looking through your eyes, the I am presence, soul, whatever you want to name it, that didn't have an opinion. It wasn't jealous, it wasn't angry, it didn't have any angst, it didn't have any kind of thoughts. Why doesn't a soul have thoughts? Because it knows everything. No need to think, we only think here, we think, and we think that we think. 99.99999% of your thoughts are not even original. They're just, you're just picking them up off the airwaves from the collective. That's why the saying, nothing new under the sun. So, again, here we are at this point in our history where we get to choose what kind of reality we're going to experience in the next moment of now. I don't know about you, but myself, I choose the reality where I'm healthy and strong. The people around me are healthy and strong. There is no sickness. There is no disease. There is only expansion of consciousness, a reverence for everyone because they possess gifts and ability, they have abilities that you don't, and vice versa, you have abilities that they don't. So we revere each other to exchange those abilities and we become greater. We are bringing the energy of heaven or the Aquarian energy to matter. The Aquarian energy is subtle but powerful. You will not notice changes instantaneous, but you will notice changes and they will pick up momentum to the point where your consciousness has expanded as to see them as normal. And the time is not something that you take into consideration because they're happening so quickly that you realize you are in the eternal now. As Terence McKenna put way, uh, the Time Wave Zero program together, he studied the Mayan calendar so much so that he put down an algorithm and spoke of this time 